G'day guys, welcome back to G-Man Speaks. Some of you guys have been sending me emails asking me to cover what might be happening in other parts of the world, even specifically a few times in China. So I've dug up this video by a channel called China Unvarnished, and the video is called Older Unmarried Women in China. How high are their standards? Can you meet them? Probably answer's already no, probably. Um, so guys, just one more thing before I get started on this, please, if you have... Um, content you want me to talk about. You see some videos, whether it be funny videos, serious videos around women, etc. Send them to me via email. I'll take a look at them and consider it. I um, always appreciate the help of the community. Let's get into it, lads. For a partner are simple. They should have a ready-made house with no mortgage, preferably be a native of Shanghai, have experience living abroad, work as a manager in a company, and most importantly, have good temperament. Oh, okay. Someone like Daniel Wu would be ideal. However, at a matchmaking event with- I suppose you get on Danny Yu is some sort of some sort of movie star. So you get these chicks that are, look, I don't really like that term post-war, but it is a real term, I guess. And, and um, I think it is a bit of a mean-spirited term, but really it's true, they're past their best, right? They're past the expiration date of where they're at their best. Um, and you get these women asking, so what she say? What were the, some of the prerequisites? She work, he works at a big company, has to be a manager, have a good temperament, be like a movie star, and have a house paid off. No, not mortgaged, a house paid off. Bloody unreal. With thousands of participants, nobody even glances at her. Pop the that. stark contrast between her ideals and reality leaves her feeling lost. I'm told I'm the oldest woman here, she says. I don't want to continue anymore. Wen Jie, 35, is a senior executive in a company. Born and raised in Shanghai, she has always had a privileged upbringing, coupled with some good looks, which made her quite popular in her 20s. However, her high standards have prevented her from finding a suitable partner. It's only now that she's starting to feel the true weight of loneliness. So, whenever she has free time, she shuttles between various matchmaking events in Shanghai. No offense, mate, but she looks like the Toxic Avenger with a wig on. <laughs> but look, I know I bag these chicks out of their looks. I'm just having a bit of fun, guys. But, you know, if they say if they say something like that, I have to say something about it, don't I? But it's like, it sounds like a lot of the same things are happening over over there with these middle-aged women like these. They've got these speed dating events and, um, you know, blind dating events and singles nights and all that shit they start getting desperate and going to all these events when they're 35 plus so i doesn't i don't think women are different no matter where they live or where they're brought up especially in those countries now um look i know nothing about china i know they make a heaps of shit there in factories that's about as far as it goes all right never been there um don't know much about it but I would have thought that women would have been more traditional um, over there, would have been more feminine. But it looks like a lot of these ideals um, and high standards have leaked over into that. So the womanism hasn't you know, stopped in the West. It's gone over to the East as well. But in saying that too, guys, um, I have come across and, and gone out with Asian women. And guys, they can ask get myself a cute little Chinese girl or a cute little Japanese girl or a cute little Filipino girl. A lot of those women have extraordinarily high status, especially like the Chinese ones, right? Because with their money is a big thing. Money is everything. So if you don't have money, they don't want nothing to do with you. And they want you to pamper them. Have you gone to Chadston Shopping Centre? Or a big Westfield Shopping Centre, you know, with all the designer shops? So say you walk past, you're in a CBD, whether it's Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, wherever you're from, overseas, America, wherever you are, right? Who is buying all that super expensive shit and all those designer stores where like a jacket's like 50 grand? It's Asian women are in there with some Asian dude, billionaire dude, or mega millionaire guys buying them heaps of shit. I know that's quite on the extreme side and it's a stereotype. It's, um, it's very, very real. Oh, yeah, so I suffer nice little Asian. I'm like, oh, God, you poor bastard. That's what I think to myself. But in her eyes, all the prospective partners are subpar. It's her high and rigid standards that have kept her single for so long. Despite realizing her mistake, she refuses to lower her criteria, <laughs> even in the face of criticism from matchmakers. What do you have to offer? What makes you so special? What can you give him? 
Just because you're a woman, are there not enough women out there? Cop there. But Wenjie, 35, can't hear any of these words. Seeing Wenjie's attitude, the matchmaker can only helplessly introduce her to a wealthy and handsome man for a blind date. To Wenjie, this man is undoubtedly the ideal marriage partner, but to him, she's worthless. To be honest, I don't even want to look at her. Upon hearing oh. the wealthy man's evaluation of her, Wenjie breaks down. She cries like a teenager. But reality is cruel. When you demand high standards from others, you must also examine whether you meet those standards. That's something that I always say and I've always said. Women have these high standards. And I found it incredibly frustrating uh, talking to women on dating apps and all that sort of thing. And just the absolute entitlement of what they want out of a man and the things that they'll ask you to try and determine if you're worthy of them. But, you know, they bloody work in retail and live with their parents and they're 38 years old with, with, with bloody credit card debt or something like that. Absolute dumpster fire life. But are judging you based on some ideal from Instagram or, you know, some Hollywood movie or something. It's absolutely incredible. But I've, I've had several instances, and I've talked about this many times, is... You can become friendly with some women and after you've been dating them, but you know, obviously it might not go anywhere, but you become friends and just chat and whatever and you move on, you date other people and you stay in contact. And then they come to me and they ask me advice. Oh, what do you, why do you think this guy is doing this? Or why do you think this has happened? Or why do you think I can't do that? And I'm bluntly honest with them. As you guys know, I don't pull any punches. I just fucking say it like that, like that guy said. You're not dateable. You have nothing to offer a guy. What do I get? I don't get, oh, well, how can I be better or what a guy is like? It's like, well, nah, fuck you. I'll never talk to me again, you bastard, you misogynist, and the uh, block and delete you. I'm like, yeah, whatever. But it's a very rare thing. that They hear words, they don't, they don't listen. They hear, they're not listening. You would think. It's like anything. If something's not working for you, maybe you've got to reevaluate and recalibrate standards. But no, the standards get worse. And that's something that boggles my mind. In China... There are many older single women like Wenjie. They generally focus only on the man's financial status and social standing, while lacking a clear understanding of their own shortcomings. Their standards for choosing a partner are often very demanding, even unrealistic. Next, let's take a look at some of the exaggerated demands made by other older single women. <laughs> As a 38-year-old single woman, are our standards for choosing a partner really too high? Yes. I don't think so. Even if you don't have money, it's fine, I can support you. I only care about your age, I like men born after 1995. I absolutely do not want men over 30 years old. After all, the health of the child is directly related to the father, right? What? Another requirement is that I won't consider men who are infertile. Additionally, my standards are even stricter. Men who can't have healthy children are absolutely not acceptable. As for the bride price, I can give you money, say, 200,000 yuan. But our child must take my surname. Wow. You should be at least 1.8 meters tall and have abs. <laughs> we women also value looks and physique. Otherwise, it's embarrassing to go out together, and I would lose face. If you don't have a house, you can live in mine. You just need to take care of the housework and cook for me. <laughs> I have a sensitive stomach, so you need to take care of my diet. Moreover, you have to be obedient and gentle, and at home, you must listen to me additionally. Our relationship can only be led well. by you. You cannot be unreasonable. I can spend money on you, but you can't trouble me. I'm very tired from working outside every day, and I just want peace when I get home. As for work and education, I don't care if you have a job or not. But if you do have a job, it can't be too busy. Being too busy means you won't have time to take care of the house and children. Moreover, you need to provide emotional support at home, always accompany me, appreciate me, and wow. admire me. Jesus, that sounds like a bloke, you know, a real fucking... It sounds like what a man wants. So that's a, it's very, very clear that... Um... Yeah, there's some bloody gender roles switching over there. That's incredible. I, I thought she was joking. I thought she thought she got off to a pretty good start. Um, didn't seem too unreasonable. And then she went, um, she dialed it up to 100. <laughs> oh, God, I'm very surprised by that. How old are you this year? 30. Are you married? No. Do you have a boyfriend? 
No. Why aren't you married? I don't see the point. Not right yet. What's the point of having a boyfriend? So he can spend money on you? Yes, but he also has to be willing. How much money per month do you think is appropriate for a boyfriend to give you? I don't know. Is 50,000 yuan enough? That's definitely enough. How much bride price is needed to marry you? The normal amount, 200,000 yuan. I think you're very beautiful, so there must be many guys chasing you. Why do you think you're still single? Is it because you're very picky? I don't know. I think it's mainly that I have to like him, and he must have money. So, he needs to be both rich and someone you like, right? Not necessarily. If he truly likes me, he can have less oh, money. Thanks. But if he doesn't truly like me, he must have a lot of money. Wow. How much money do you think is a lot? I don't know. I think he should have at least 50 million yuan in assets. But besides that, the most important thing is that I feel something for him if I have no feelings for him at all, I still wouldn't marry him. What are you doing? Jesus! I don't know, oh, how's that? I feel sorry for my Chinese buddies out there. Got my Chinese viewers who watch G Man and be with the subtitles on in Chinese, you know, translation. I feel bad for you guys. All right, about halfway through. Uh, if you're enjoying this content, taking a look at different parts of the world and what's going on, please subscribe to the channel. Only for 10K subs, so please be a part of the growth journey. And if you do want to support the channel, guys, the best way is just to watch my videos, to watch them all the way through, like, comment, uh, engage with each other. That's, that's how it gets me out there and increases my online footprint. And if you do want to support the channel even further, consider becoming a patron. Uh, link in the video description. Actually, my requirements aren't too excessive. Since my family is from the countryside, I want the guy to have a villa in the countryside with a swimming pool. He also needs to have an apartment in the city that's at least 140 <laughs> square meters so that it will be convenient for our child to go to school in the future. He okay. should have savings of about 1 million yuan and a car worth around 50 to 60,000 yuan. The bride price should be 1 million yuan. That's it, just these requirements. To be honest, when I told my parents about these conditions, they advised me not to look for a partner. Then why are you still looking? I think if I go on 10 blind dates, at least ten. one should be successful. I just need to go on more dates. As a guy, I have to tell you, there are basically no young men who can meet your conditions. I'm genuinely here to find a match, so I'm telling you the truth, please don't get angry. Oh, that's a very low probability. But as a woman, I have to look out for myself if the guy has that much money, my future life won't be difficult or rushed. I would be... There you go, boys. No money, no honey. And at least they're in these Asian countries, um, at least they're upfront about it. Uh, all women are like this. These girls just say it. It's culturally okay for them to say this sort of thing uh, in, in America and uh, the West, Australia. They might joke about it on TikToks and shit, but they won't straight up say it to your face how much you got to earn and what you got to have. They'll work that out through all the, you know, questioning that you go through when you're in a dating phase. They're always trying to work you out, suss you out. So guys, always be careful. So happy I could laugh in my dreams. Miss, may I ask how old you are this year? I'm 28 years old. Oh, for a woman, 28 is considered quite old. No wonder your parents told you to stop looking for a match. <laughs> yes, although my parents say that, I definitely need to find a boyfriend. Miss, since your parents know it's hard to find someone who meets your conditions, why don't you? Lower your standards a bit. Yeah, good on you. No one in the countryside can meet your demands. The villas you mentioned are just like the houses in front of you. Most rural houses are like this, and they are nicely decorated. Also, the savings, bride price, car, and city apartment you require are very rare. I think it would be great if I could find a guy with these conditions. This way, I wouldn't have to think about earning money or finding a job every day, which is so annoying. <laughs> That's annoying. Going to work there, yeah, that shit. <laughs> Welcome to the life of a man. But hey, I think um, these women have almost been conditioned for this because from my experience, um, and hey, Chinese guys, if anyone's watching, or people that are from, you know, Chi families that have immigrated from China, 
tell me in the comments, is this not true? Because what I've observed from um, Chinese guys, because I work in the corporate role, guys, a lot of um, Australian Chinese with uh, those Chinese, you know, very strong and traditional Chinese links. They are the most simpish guys I've ever met. They, they, they lead with money. They shower women with gifts. You know, it's their life's mission to keep a woman happy, to pay, 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 pay. So I don't blame them for having these standards because this is what they're used to or what used to seeing other women get. Is it out of control? Yes, they're going to find out. Um, you know, while she's 28, she's living in a, in, in a village somewhere and she's um, going to have no chance of finding someone who's rich, like is going to come and take her. It's just, it's mental. The elders in my village used to love introducing boyfriends to me, but they stopped doing so, miss. You're old. Let's call it a day then. We're just wasting each other's time. Cop I that. have one last piece of advice for you. Since your parents advised you not to go on blind dates, you really shouldn't. It wastes other people's time <laughs> and yours that. too. I'm leaving now. Goodbye. <laughs> Why do you think you can reject me? Your conditions aren't better than mine, and you don't look that good either. <laughs> what gives you the right to look down on me? Answer me. Fine, I admit my conditions aren't as good as yours, and my assets aren't as good either. But I like 18-year-old girls. Don't blame me. My 80-something-year-old grandfather likes 18-year-olds. My 50-something-year-old dad likes 18-year-olds. And me? I'm around 30, so I like 18-year-olds even more. <laughs> and you? You're already 38. So what? You knew my age before coming to this blind date. Since you knew my age and still came, you should respect me, right? If you like 18-year-olds, go find an 18-year-old. Why did you come to me? I didn't think that much before I came. Have a look at his face. I don't know why he came to her. He thought he was going to get an empty out. He was going to just fucking ram jam her in the back of his VN behind the, um, well, what's sport? Badminton ground. Those are the Chinese guys play badminton behind the ping pong tables, man. He's slamming her on the ping pong table. That's why he's there. He loves his 18 year olds. Him and his dad and his um, grandpa just gang banging them. But seriously, these guys are waking up, which is great. And I like how honest these guys are with them. I can't understand if this is bullshit stories or what with the subtitles. I can't follow it with the talking. Apparently, it's a, a real live translation, so we're going to just have to trust that. Came. But after meeting you, I really didn't expect your demands to be so high. Let me tell you, it's a time when there are more men than women. You say my demands are high? Your desire for an 18-year-old girl is even higher as a woman. If I want to find an 18-year-old boy, even if he doesn't marry me, he would at least get to know me. So what if you get to know an 18-year-old boy? Let's see if you can actually become his girlfriend. <laughs> hey, nice. I know you're 38, and I came here sincerely for this blind date, not to talk about dreams. But the moment you sat down, you started talking about dreams, having a house and a car, both fully paid for, and having at least several million in savings. Do you think your demands are realistic? Why wouldn't my demands be realistic? They are very normal for a man. Forget it. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Oh, that. No money, no honey. They, they're ruthless over there, isn't it? Look at this thing. It's like a head like a turnip or something. But... um. That is incredible. So I think a lot of these Chinese chicks live in a bloody alternate reality. But as I said, I think they're used to seeing that because there are a lot of rich Chinese people. I know it's a big population, um, but, you know, sadly there's 2 billion Chinese. I don't know, I'm making it up, right? There's probably, what, 50 million billionaires or something? I don't know. But there's a lot of rich Asian people, so they, they see a lot of this, and the people even from the poor areas and rural areas, you know, they um they want a bit of that action too. They think that's what's that's what's normal. Um, that's what's, what's what I'm getting from these clips, because that's outrageous. I mean, it isn't that bad over here in Australia. Um, we we're not that upfront about it. A certain kind of woman probably would be, not so much with dollars, because you know they wouldn't have two brain cells to rub together to even be able to work out what a good asset base was. But yeah, they want to be paid for. They want to be kept women. It's just, um, looks like this is a global phenomenon. 
so this for me is uh, it's quite open, eye-opening me watching this video. I'm watching it live. I haven't watched this video with guys. I'm watching it with you. Are my marriage criteria really too high? I have a master's degree no and cares. I'm willing to find someone with a bachelor's degree. I own two houses and I'm open to someone. We can't fuck your degrees and we can't fuck your house. From any city in Zhejiang, rural or urban, as long as they can afford a down payment. I request a dowry of 50,000 renminbi and I'll match it with another 50,000 renminbi, making a total of 100,000 renminbi as a future childbearing fund. The only aspect where I'm a bit demanding is in the height of the prospective partner. Perhaps because I'm not tall myself, at 158 centimeters, I hope the man is at least 175 centimeters tall, so our future children may have an advantage in height. Overall, I believe these four conditions are reasonable. I've already compromised a lot, but some keep urging me to lower my standards. However, how could I accept a man with only a primary school education, standing at 160 centimeters tall, and earning only 3,500 yuan per month? That's just not realistic. <laughs> primary school retard, short retard. She goes from having reasonable expectations, having a primary school leveled retard who's a midget and who makes no money. <laughs> this year, as a 34-year-old unmarried woman, I decided to embark on the journey of blind dates. This is my first blind date of the year, and the gentleman is also single. He is two years younger than me and from Shenyang. Introduced by a friend, I heard he works in a state-owned enterprise, possibly as a laborer. This morning, Labor. I rushed out without having breakfast, so I had to buy a bag of milk from the store. After drinking it, I realized the seat I was in had no backrest, so I moved to another spot to wait for him. When I saw him, I noticed he was quite thin. During our conversation, I learned that he currently lives with his parents, and he intends to continue living with them after marriage. Just type I it feel in. like we may have some differences in perspective because I don't want to live with my parents after getting married. That's I fair. prefer to have our own space as a couple. That's fair. However, I can sense that he is a reliable and hardworking person, and he seems to have a liking for me, deliberately trying to make me happy by cracking jokes we talked about what sounds different animals make. He <sighs> asked me about the meow sound of cats, and I asked him if chickens cluck. He said chickens do cluck, and the chance is reserved for the prepared one. Haha, -ha, he really made me laugh. We just got to know each other a bit. As it was nearing lunchtime, he suggested treating me to something delicious, so he took me to KFC. He said today is Crazy Thursday, so I asked him what that meant. Turns out, KFC has promotional offers on Thursdays. I didn't expect him to take me to KFC on our first meeting, and although I was a little disappointed, it's not a big deal. What a legend, man. He took it to KFC, he's trying to get some Chinese strange. But if he doesn't have much money, I don't know how much KFC um, costs over there, but I've been to Thailand a few times, and McDonald's over there is like a, a very expensive treat for the locals. I'm not sure about KFC in China, but hey, he took you somewhere, he's trying to do something. Um, so... Yeah, I think it's just female nature across the whole world. But anyway, guys, I'm going to stop it. This goes for another four minutes or so. Uh, but I think we got the gist of it. Women over there have incredibly high standards as well, if not stupidly high standards that they won't budge on. Um, and it's going to be a lot of cat ladies over in China as well. Um, so, guys, thank you very much. If you've watched this far, once again, I always appreciate your time. Um, time is very valuable, and I appreciate you spending it watching me talk to you. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.